What would you do if you and your family lived in a dark little town in Italy where most of your neighbors wanted you gone? They wanted you crushed beneath them. They wanted to know that you were suffering. You try to get along with them, but they would just keep coming for your family one by one, picking them off like some sort of game. And you couldn't go to police because they were no help. What would you do? Hello strangers and strangelings, welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. I'm serving up another true crime story time. So pull up a chair if you like strange true crime and storytelling, then this is the place to be here with me, JP. So kick back and grab a drink and a snack. And remember to always tip that like button because it helps with the channel. Join that SBG family by subscribing and hitting that notification bell to make sure you're getting notified when I release a weekly video. All right, let's go. They were all out to get Leo. They were all out to get his mother and they were all out to get his father. Every last one of the neighbors were bad and wanted to hurt Leo and his family. So Leo and his family didn't leave the house very much. They were the outcasts in their town. On rare occasion, when they would leave to get groceries, they would be stared at. The people in town would curse them and they were definitely plotting on them. It was bad enough that Leo's mother had gotten sick. This really made Leo worry about what him and his father would do. After all, she took care of them, but Leo's mom reassured them and said that she was fine and didn't need any medical attention. She believed that the neighbors had something to do with this. She believed that the neighbors made her ill. Somehow they poisoned her. Leo believed it and his father did too. It was probably the house just down the street. The whole neighborhood didn't like them, but they were the worst. They were always terrorizing them. Leo and his family believed if they stayed out of the view of their evil neighbors, then the neighbors couldn't track them and they couldn't continue to make her ill. They couldn't poison her and she would start to feel better and things could return to normal. So Leo and his family started to go out less and less. They made sure to stay out of view of those prying neighbors. The family's reclusive behavior went on for a few months, but it didn't seem to work. The family would venture out for groceries, but every time they returned, things seemed out of place. They locked the door behind them and they made sure of it, but someone was getting in. Someone was making mother sick. Did an outsider have a key? Was it a landlord? Possibly. And then one day it happened. The neighbor somehow got to the mother and she passed while in her bed. The family would call the authorities to have the body removed. Leo remembers the weird looks from the police and the medics. Something just seemed off about them. Could they be in on it too? They seemed pretty friendly with the terrorizers down the street. Maybe. And according to the official report, Leo's mom died of breast cancer. But could this be true? Leo and his father thought. One thing that couldn't be questioned was, Leo was very distraught after losing his mother, but he remembered what his mother had told him before passing. Leo, you have to step up and protect this family. Take good care of your father. Leo wouldn't forget his mother's last words and would assume the role his mother once did. Leo would cook and take care of the house the best he could. Part of the job of taking care of father was to keep them away and out of the view of those neighbors. They got his mom and would try to get him and his father too. And for the next 12 years, they would successfully manage to keep their distance from these neighbors. Then one day, Leo's father became ill. How did this happen? Leo thought to himself. How did they get to his father? Obviously, they had help, right? The police had to be in on it. This had to be a coordinated attack on Leo's family. How else could they have gotten to Leo's father? He promised his father that he would protect him like he wasn't able to do for his mother. So Leo would keep his daily routine, only leaving the house when he needed food. He must not let the neighbors know his father was sick, he thought to himself, because if they know, they will come for him too. Leo would keep up with his routine for several days, but his father was in pain. Leo thought about taking him to the hospital, but his father adamantly declined and did not want to go to a hospital. He did not want treatment. He knew that's what his neighbors wanted him to do. They wanted to know that his father was sick because they derived pleasure from it. They wanted to come and take them all away. 
Leo and his father weren't going to let them win. And with that, Leo's father went silent. He was no longer going to make noise. He did not want the neighbors to hear him. And for the next five months, the outside world wouldn't know a thing about what Leo and his father were up to. That's until one day Leo catches one of his neighbors snooping around outside. Leo would aggressively confront the neighbor and a heated argument would ensue. The neighbor would call the police. Police would arrive on the scene and would end up entering Leo's house that he shared with his father. This is when police would make the gruesome discovery of Leo's father's mummified remains lying on the bed. The father didn't appear to have any signs of being attacked, but Leo started becoming aggressive and the police had to subdue him. Leo was sent directly to a psychiatric hospital and was diagnosed with a psychotic disorder. He admitted his father passed away five months earlier. He has been trying to keep it a secret because, quote, in order to not allow the neighbors to know that they had managed to kill his father because otherwise they would have come to take him and me with him. You see, Leo, along with his family, all shared in the same delusion of persecution. They believed that their neighbors were trying to kill them. They believed their neighbors were watching their every move in order to poison them, and then they could come take their bodies. They believed that not only the neighbors were out to get them, but also the police, Italy's prime minister, and the Pope were also out to get them. Leo thought by hiding his father's death, spraying deodorant all over the house, you know, living with the corpse and going about his normal routine, he thought he could outsmart everyone and they wouldn't come for him. Now, see, this type of delusion is called folly in famille or family madness and is a rare clinical syndrome characterized by the transference of delusional ideas from one person to one or more other people in close association with the primary affected person. So basically, a member of your family passes on their psychosis to you and you guys all kind of share this delusion together. Authorities believe that the mother transferred her delusional ideas to the father and son. And before my wife kicks the door in old school Jean-Claude Van Damme style and says they always blame the mother, I will say yes. We don't know what went on in that house. They could have drove that woman crazy and then just pointed the finger that, you know, did one of those numbers. Like, I'm just reading the, the case notes here. But ultimately, police would ask him why he lived with his father's corpse like that. And Leo's response was, mom told me to take care of father. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comment section. I know that one was a little bit shorter, but I read the story and I thought it was real interesting. So I wanted to share it with you guys. And if you're new to my channel and you like these strange true stories, these strange true crime stories, then maybe consider subscribing. And if you're already subscribed, then leave a comment, leave a like, all of those cliche things, share whatever, or just say hi in the comment section. You know, I could talk, I could talk to you guys. So. Just say hi in the comment section. I'll probably say hi back to you. But until next time, be safe, be good, 